To the best of my knowledge, I have never met uh, Truat in my life. I don't recall meeting Truat in my life. Shelley Kane, uh, or Sherry Kane, or whatever her name is, told me that um, I was in league with this guy, or in league with the uh, individuals around uh, this man, and that I was an agent, and um, I was working with uh, those in the conspiracy uh, movement to uh, topple this great deal of work that has been done by many people for years. And uh, I was told that uh, I was conspiring with uh, Truat um, to topple this damn movement. And Shelley Kane or Sherry Kane uh, was uh, working with uh, Dr. Horowitz, who was at one time uh, I, a fellow I considered to be a friend. I have since been sued by uh, Sherry Kane and sued by uh, Dr. Horowitz, uh, accused of many crimes, uh, one of which was th uh, taking us down the yellow brick road. Shelley Kane said that I was um, a self-hating Jew. Um, And I always thought that I was a Christian, but uh, according to her, I was a self-hating Jew. And individuals uh, got on the uh, list of uh, people to be sued, and it grew and grew and grew. Uh, Alex Jones was a suspect. Certainly, Truat, even though I've never met him, was a suspect. And individuals in the conservative or patriotic world movement are suspects. Maybe Trevar Barbara Tavares uh, has been one. Um, she's a suspect. And... Um, all of these individuals uh, are supposed to be the bad guys. And Shelley Kane and uh, Horowitz are supposed to be the good guys. I was invited to um, spend some time in Hawaii with um, an individual who was conducting uh, a meeting of um, exposers of the uh, cons great conspiracy. And uh, the lady who has invited me, uh, who had invited me was um, sort of built like a uh, Ali Matson of the Rams, uh, big, thick, buxom, and very outgoing. I was asked to uh, spend the night in their daughter's uh, uh, abode which was at Hawaii, in the uh, complex there at, uh, in Hawaii, in Honolulu. And um, I started to begin to uh, become sort of 
suspect. And as later time went on, I became greatly uh, suspicious of the activities that were going on uh, behind this one woman uh, who um, took charge. In fact, one of the villas of the uh, meeting in uh, Honolulu um, was a nice enough guy and uh, was taking uh, pictures of uh, our meeting. And she accused the, the, him of being unauthorized to take these pictures. And the fellow uh, was off in a way when uh, this woman uh, jumped the fence and went after him and actually took him down. When I say took him down, I took, said they, he, uh, she punched him out. Uh, and that, that sounded crazy that, you know, she would intervene in that way, but uh, she did. And, uh, of the, of the, the woman, the yeah. big woman? You told me the story once before, but I don't remember her name. When you call me on the phone, I never met yes. Anthony until just yesterday. Oh, so this is your yeah. first visit? Yeah, and we've talked on the phone. He's called me when this whole lawsuit of you know, insanity right, came up. Okay. But the first time I, I just knew him from his pictures, and I said, well, I said hi to you yesterday. And I never, never met seen him before. or met him, nor, nor have I ever met Sherry Kane. I, mean, I don't know who she was. Either, but have you ever met her? No, no, you haven't. don't ever want to either. Frankly, <laughs> I don't think I'd want She's that. She's something me. else. When she was up there on that panel with the year before last, and Anthony was up there, it was just it was unbelievable. Yeah. She and Horowitz sitting up there. I got the I got the DVD sent to me. Oh, you did? Yeah, and I'm just like, holy mackerel. I know. But see, people are smart. They they saw through it, didn't they? Oh yeah. They they saw through the. Finally, attack somebody and, gave. Uh, Brian a note, a letter, and said, "Stop this! We didn't come here." It foul language and, and all oh, that. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean it was very obvious. Yeah, it was very obvious. By your fruits you shall know them. So it's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These days, litigation is uh, not a fun thing to get tangled in, though. But you still have to defend it. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, the courts threw it out. So I mean, and and my attorney just was ama was amazed. I, it cost me money to defend. Yes. As it did, I uh, probably Anthony too. But yes. but my attorney just just left, says any judge that even would hold this for one minute is crazy. It's it's there's absolutely. a lot of crazy judges. Yeah, though. but that's the know, problem. Yeah, it's so corrupt. But it's a, it's another state. Are they gonna have jurisdiction over somebody else in another state? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's not really the reason I wanted to talk, but I did want to talk to uh, Truat to get this story clear. Um, Absolutely. Good. To sweep the uh, dust uh, from the pages. And clarify. This should be filmed right now. It's, it is. The it's things still rolling. that... Uh, we're wrong. Um, the one woman um, who invited me over to uh, Hawaii, um, she was a talk show host. Uh, as I understand it, had been arrested by um, the feds and was um, working with, with, with various people uh, associated with the mu movement, uh, in fact, uh, uh, serving as a uh, volunteer for, uh, for um, uh, Brian Hall, right here in the convention, uh, the Con Con Convention. And I told him that 
I didn't want to have any association with this woman. Uh, but she's been working with the uh, um, B'nai B'rith or group in a multi-million dollar uh, facility out of Hawaii. And when I walked into uh, the conference uh, with um, um, Dr. Um, Horowitz, I looked over there, and here was this woman who created this stuff. She would talk about Anthony Hitler, you know. Uh, um, and she seemed to have direct communication, was in league with... Um, our conductor of activities of the conference was Shelley or Sherry Kane, and um, therein lies the problem. And uh, certainly, I, I took a look at the uh, activities of the one woman, and she had been um, um, on the payroll of this Zionist cabal and uh, orchestrating some of the activities uh, behind the uh, event. Uh, anyhow, we, I, I needed to t uh, t talk a bit about that. Um, I'll give you her name later. I'm trying to forget her name right now at the moment. Uh, um, she tried to um, get her daughter to move out of her, her room, and I was willing certainly to do that. But as the evening uh, the evenings grew, um, I was asked to shower in her room and. Um, um, I heard the door open. I guess it was the woman uh, conducting the event. Um, and you know, she came in, to, wanted to go, come in to use the uh, shower. So she said, "Can I scrub your do your back?" And I said, "Well, that's all right. Go ahead." So. Um, she came in and took off her bra, uh, these enormous, big, you know, jumping, I guess, double D or whatever the hell it was. Um, but she was sort of gross. In my imagination, or my th uh, view, uh, extremely gross. And um, she was trying to put the make on me. Um, and we went out for um, a ride along the beach. And she said, take off your clothes. Uh, I said, I'm, I'm not into that kind of stuff. But it was a nude beach, she said. Well, I said, not for me. It's not nude. Um, and uh, she took off her um the top of her suit. We went on for a swim, and uh, her breasts were floating along the top. Uh, and it was like these huge, big, uh, cylindrical um, pancock um, flotation, device. flotation devices, <laughs> which grossed me out. <laughs> And I was told uh, 
when I found that out that the uh, activities was, was being recorded in Hawaii um, um, and done very well by her uh, with Jordan Maxwell being um, my co-host uh, in the day before I was to leave I got a call and uh, they had asked me to come into um, the a fellow who was uh, conducting an anti-monetary um, scheme uh, for uh, the uh, creation of currency. And it was good currency. It was, I don't know, it was uh, something fed. Uh, but they had the, the whole operation. And um, this woman had worked for uh, about uh, nearly a year in the act for, for this guy. And I guess she was considered to be a friend of him, of his. And she turned on him, and uh, there was an investigation by the the feds. They raided the house. She was involved in the uh, uh, activities, and she said, "Well, well, we've we've got you now." And the fellow uh, was uh, convinced that there was. Uh, a, co a cooperation uh, between the two, uh, and uh, was uh, she um, wound up in getting this guy sentenced to to jail. And the that's the, the organization that we're talking about uh, involving. Shelly Kane, Sherry Kane, and Lynn Horowitz. She was working amongst them, closely aligned with them. Is it a Zionazi type organization? Well, certainly, there, this is an operation that wasn't done by Americans, it was done the, by those in control of. Uh, whatever activity the uh, these people wanted to do, and that was to knock off the uh, uh, right wing or the uh, conservative, uh, the conservatives and uh, patriots amongst, uh, amongst us. And that would include you. Yes, uh, Lou, and, Lou and you in the entire uh, group, um, in, including Truat and company. And that's really about what I should say. Uh, I'll, I can get into the details later, but I want to talk to you about uh, Truat. Is there, is there uh, amongst us individuals who've got the message? who are able and capable uh, of convincing a majority of the people that this movement, the patriot movement, uh, is being infiltrated. I'm going to ask you, True, uh, I have never met you before, and I was told by Shelley Kane, that I was in league with you. I was in league with uh, Ted Gunderson. I was in league with Ted Gunderson, a former head of the FBI in L.A., Dallas, and Memphis. And uh, the conspiratorial network uh, was expanded so that somehow we were involved in the same conspiracy. 
they, we were involved in uh, setting people up or doing uh, some de de uh, disastrous uh, deed that would uh, um, bring in the, the true odds uh, and the uh, William um, or Brian Wilson Hall or Brian Hall into uh, the play of this um, conspiracy. Now, this is a real conspiracy by real people, one of which is uh, Shelley Kane and uh, Horowitz uh, to strike dead this movement. Uh, I, I've known Lynn for a period of time and uh, I've been uh, pushing uh, he, what he has done, and, or at least until recently. So a true, uh, a, for first of all, let me uh, uh, shake your hands. Thank you for doing what uh, has not been said and what has not been done. I'm told that uh, you gave a speech here at the Conspiracy Con, which would indicate that you have knowledge that those in power in the US government had previous knowledge of the 9-1-1 event, that possibly the Zionese, that might, might might be the reason uh, that I was under attack, um, had knowledge of uh, what preceded and led to the uh, attack upon the World Trade Center by the Zion Nazis with the full cover and uh, cooperation of the government of the United States. Where have I gone wrong here? Uh, I have, have, for the record, uh, never met Mr. Hilder until yesterday for the first time we, when we physically met. I, uh, bec because of this, these, uh, I classify them as pure crazy rantings, uh, trying to link us together, I had the privilege of talking to you on the phone. You initiated the call, called me, and just got to know me a little bit. And uh, I, I got to know you, and that's been a blessing, frankly. I had no idea you were doing all of the videos that you've done, and I was inter introduced to you by this, and I'm saying he's a, he's a hero. Well done documents, and, and I realize you're, you've forgotten more about this movement than most people will ever know. And so I look at it as like a blessing that <laughs> we got to know each other. And, and, and that's really why I'm here today, frankly. Uh, there was an, a, a vicious attack against me personally at the conspiracy conference two years ago that I had, I had friends from Utah that had traveled and were in attendance and physically were so upset they called me on the phone. They know who I am. And they said, you can't believe what this, you know, what's being said about you. And then they went to, to, to Brian and, and said, you know, we're, we know this guy. He's not this way. Uh, this is a personal attack that we don't feel like you should, you know, should allow. And so to his credit, Brian sent me a, a letter of ex explanation apologizing. It, and I don't, it was not his fault. He can't, flat out can't uh, guarantee what's been going to be said. I had no, of course he's not responsible or liable for it, but it was nice of him to let, let me know he was sorry and apologetic. And I developed a relationship with him over that because he began to wonder, why are they doing this? Why are they attacking you? And, and I shared with them my thoughts of why possibly they would be doing that. And you mentioned Ted Gunderson. In August uh, of the year before uh, the conspiracy conference, in August of uh, 2009, uh, I sponsor a, a friend of mine from Las Vegas named Dane Phillips sponsored a conference in Ogden basically to get, you know, he's on the learning curve with this thing. He was completely unaware of this cabal, this, this, the reasons and the things really behind September 11th. 
he heard me speak at another conference in 2009, and I gave him a lot of documentation that rocked his world. Okay, he said, as a Christian gentleman, wow, I, you, you shake my paradigm. So he had a, a writer friend uh, named John Skura, who wrote uh, screenplays and, and that for, for Hollywood. He uh, used to be a writer for Merv Griffin, I understand, and, and it's quite well, well known. They were uh, fraternity brothers in college. And Skura was, at the time, a complete and total skeptic of all of this craziness. That he called it craziness, conspiracy theory, nutcases. But he said, uh, uh, Dane Phillips said, could we meet you and anybody that you think is a star that can explain the story? And I said, look, to me, the, the Achilles Hill, his whole movement, is the satanic ritual abuse going on against innocent children. And the best that I know of that can do this is John DeCamp's book on the Franklin cover-up. Uh, I've I know a friend of John DeCamp's and Ted Gunderson's named Doug Millar. Doug's been terribly um, busy, it worn out his life, frankly, in exposing the story uh, for for over a decade that I know of. And so I said, look, if. If you want to hear from the horse's mouth, let's get Ted Gunderson, let's get John DeCamp, let's get, uh, get others that uh, Doug Millar might know. He's, he does know a lot of people. Uh, let's get them together for a conference in Ogden, Utah. And let's, let's go uh, ask them the tough questions on camera, just like we're doing right here, mm -hmm. videotaped, audio taped. And if Gunderson's uh, agreeable to it, we'll do it. So on his... His expense, his nickel, uh, Dane Phillips brought all these people together, flew uh, John DeCamp in, flew Ted Gunderson in, put him up at the, at the, the hotel, much like Brian has done with, with me here in this conference. And it was a, a full day, and I'm here to tell you, Ted Gunderson opened his files like he's never opened them before. He was diagnosed with cancer. He knew he was feeling the mortality of that. And he put out things that I didn't know about who's really behind the finders, the whole group of the CIA. And I tell you, it was an eye-opener to John Skura. Out of that interview came the book called Battle Him. And you can go on and get the book, Battle Him, BattleHim.com. That's where that all came from. Uh, Skura used his writing skills and his investigative, and his questions were very poignant, interviewing not only um, DeCamp um, and, and uh, myself and uh, Ted Gunderson, but also uh, victims, eyewitness victims suffering from uh, multiple personality uh, with repressed memories, but evidence. The evidence is overwhelming if you honestly look at it. So at that point, it was right at that conference that the attacks by Sherry Kane and a lady named Barbara Hartwell and whoever started really hammering Ted to discredit Ted from this, this body of information. And it was very upsetting to, to Ted. Um, she hadn't been attacking me yet, but she was surely attacking and making all these character assassinations on, on Ted, saying he was... Uh, co-intel pro, misinformation, disinformation. And I said on record to Ted, why, why would you be opening these, these files that you know, expose this whole thing if you're misinformation, if you're a part of it? The Michael Aquino connection to the, uh, the military, the, the John Alexander connections. And, so, and Ted was, was staying at, at my house that evening. And I'll never forget, this was what a part of the time, last time he was really vocal before he went really went downhill fast with his cancer. And, he, you know, he's a tough guy. He's, he's an American hero, a, a macho kind of guy. And Ted Gunderson broke down and cried, you know. And he said, I couldn't stop it because of the power of this cabal, this group. And he says, and it's the Jewish contingent. I haven't been able to say that, but now I know I don't have a lot of time left. That's the secret. And so I said, 
well, it makes sense because of what I've researched too, and then comparing his notes. So at that point is when I started getting attacked. And, you know, if we're not telling the truth on this, there's no reason for attack. You're talking about the innocent ones, the little children that are the victims here. And if you can't stand for them and, and, and fight for them, who can you fight for? And Gunderson had it, had it, had it right on. He says, at all my time as bureau chief, he said, I, I'm just haunted by, you know, these innocent ones being victimized, and that's why I do what I do. That's a pure of all motives. There was no reason for him to, to be a co-intel pro agent with this. And so from that, those attacks became, okay, we, now we know who the enemy is, who's trying to, 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 to attack us, to lump us all into this for whatever, you know, their, their credibility on these attacks are, are have been lost completely, in my opinion. So when they attack you and attack me, Anthony, I think it's pretty good uh, company, <laughs> frankly. I think well, it's a compliment. I, I actually, I'm uh, <clears throat> not deeply concerned about the attack. Uh, we can identify those who are uh, on the attack against the uh, uh, Christian conservative uh, community and those who are on the fence, neither Christian nor Muslim nor Jewish. Our alliance has resulted from an alliance of the truth. And I've got nothing, nothing against the Jews. I used to go with Dorothy Cohen. Uh, and um, there's so many of us in the movement, so to speak, uh, who are willing to uh, take a stand and um, fight in the uh, war to get this information on the outside out. Uh, Ted and I, um, we're longtime friends. We were friends about 30 years. And um, he told me one story about uh, an, ev an uh, evening that he spent uh, with an agent, a federal agent. And the uh, third fellow in the room was a tall, thin um, guy uh, that he identified as Osama bin Laden. So Ted uh, was in the company of him. I was in the company of, uh, I guess, an individual who would... Uh, fit that bill and uh, I went out uh, to uh, a meeting of um, Eastern men who were um, very upset when I came out and attack attacked uh, uh, when I would not excuse, excuse me when I, they were very upset when I attacked uh, Ronald Reagan in the Central Intelligence Agency. They were convinced that the CIA was on their side and that um, Ronald Reagan was working against them, not for them. I was concerned about um, this lie being told by the, uh, my friend, uh, the Muslim, who wanted to usher me out of the uh, room where the uh, uh, individual Arabs, uh, or I uh, should say, uh, alliance of individuals uh, 
exposing the Soviet Union were um, talking. Um, Anyhow, my friend uh, got me out of the uh, got me out of the room, and uh, so I wouldn't be injured. And um, and whether it's Osama bin Laden or not, I don't I don't know. And I may never know. But um, there's something going on between the CIA. And um, the authorized uh, the authorized uh, facade that uh, the um, that Reagan and company and the CIA were uh, anti-communist. That was not the case. The Soviets were funded by the CIA. The illusion, the whole thing was a, a hodgepodge, a, a slam, a scam, a flim flam production. And these fellows had uh, gone to war. And a lot of innocent men and women, sons and daughters and mothers and brothers, were sacrificed. Guys of uh, fighting for one cause, well, the, uh, the CIA was working for another. And that's when Ted Gunderson, uh, I had met with uh, Osama bin Laden, and Ted, I will assure you that Ted was nev never, ever on any side that was anti-American. And uh, throughout, uh, my friend, um, new friend, uh, I have never been in your company before. Ever since the, that time, uh, and... Um, we we start we have to start looking at the truth, who's really on what side. And I'll assure you that the people who uh, are under attack of you. And um, a fellow named um, Jones, Alex Jones, and Ted Gunderson, and yourself. Are on the the what I what, what I call or we call, in the movement the right side. They and you are against those who are against God, in liberty, in justice, in humanity. We always have been. We always will be. Uh, so, um, if you can tell us a bit uh, about um, the 911 experience, uh, I did the first, uh, the very first uh, tape uh, on 911 that was ever done. It was called, um, well, um, it was a pr the film that preceded. Uh, um, it was the film that preceded the greatest lie ever sold. And um, we had this thing up and out, and it was done with um, Ted Gunderson and myself and a f few others that uh, were the very first to uh, expose the fact that this was an inside job. And uh, we called for an, an investigation, and uh, in so doing, we uh, brought about the ire of the uh, administration and, or, and administrations uh, uh, working under the Zionazi camp. Um, 
I thought I would proceed with you and I would like you to know that all you have been told about 911 being an inside job is a bunch of crap. It's been a sham. It's been a lie. And you're supposed to believe it. So let's get down to who actually did this, the greatest crime in the history of the United States of America. Who conducted the uh, attack? Who was behind it? Who made money from it? Tell us throughout uh, the story from your point of view. Oh yeah, thanks, Anthony. Yeah, I uh, I was involved in a small way with I don't know if you want to call it the truth movement or what. Been in from 1997 through about uh, 2001, I. I did a radio show, live radio show, uh, started out of KSUB Radio in Cedar City, Utah. It's called The Story Behind the Story. My my good friend, uh, Warren Anderson, and I basically did the content. One of, the, one of our really good guests was a controversial gentleman named William Cooper, who did wrote he, the book uh, Behold a Pale Horse had come out, and he was always good for a good audience, a good interview because of his, you know, his verifiable claims of Navy, you know, being ex-Navy intelligence and still having connections to people that love the country. And we talked about, you know, we had Ted Gunderson on the show at times trying to figure out who was the good guys, who's the bad guys, who's, who's who in the zoo is what we called it. Because it's hard to tell sometimes, you know, with Hal Turner and that, that madness coming out too. But, uh, I remember well interviewing Cooper, I believe it was uh, July or maybe early August of 2001, where he said to beware, there's going to be this major, and he called it a false flag operation coming down sometime in the first part of September. Well, I did a a, um, a review of uh, Behold a Pale Horse, endorsed the book uh, in print, and... Uh, I loved my my friend Bill, and uh, he told me that uh, they're coming to get get me. They're coming to kill me, and he was. Uh, I think it was because of what he said about September 11th. It was really he had a lot of controversial things exposing, you know, what's really happened with the UFO scam, and all of this. But this is where he really, I think, crossed the line because of the of the the. The things at risk here, the the enter, the uh, the war being planned, the long term thing, and he was definitely a loose end, and I per personally think that's what precipitated it. When he first told me the story, uh, and I I just thought, well, we'll see. I had a wait and see attitude, you know, because I really didn't believe it. My response on the morning uh, of September 11th, watching it happen, was, OMG, oh my God, Cooper's right. He's exactly what he's saying, and that stunned me because I, then I, I says, well, if what he's saying is true, will my next question was, will the American people believe the lie that comes out as to what caused it? Because obviously there's a big false flag lie coming up. And so immediately, within a few days, I, I did talk to Cooper again, and he said, look, if you really... Want to, you know, so your, your best defense is to be a good offense. They don't want to make a martyr out of you to make you know, you, your story believable. So he says, I'll, give me your phone number, and I'll have a gentleman call you that will tell you the real story behind it. And so I believe it was about a week, 10 days after September 11th. It was towards the end of September. My birthday's on September 28th. It was right around that time frame when I received the phone call from a gentleman who claimed to be one of the top three demolitions experts in the world. He was Russian slash Finnish, operating out of Finland. He says, my life isn't worth uh, a plug nickel if they get find out who I am. So he would only initiate the call to me, would never give me a phone call to, to re, re, uh, find out who he is. And, but he sent me a package of information. 
that was the entire schematic that he said he prepared for the Port Authority from for Silverstein and because they were coming to him to see what it would take to demolish the Twin Towers and other buildings there for a renovation project. That was his testimony. And so, wow, I got the, the, the document, and, and it was clear that it was wired both with super thermite but the core, the core pillars, and he showed the placement of where it would have to be for specific uh, neutron-type, fission-type of destruction bombs, what they call energy direct, what he called bunker busters, okay? He says, from a, a, a demolition expert to create the kinetic energy to destroy that building completely, you'd have, you know, there's not enough thermite or any other explosive charge that would do it. It had to have, it had to have the, 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 the tactical nuclear bombs. Well, I got this and I thought, well, this is, this is flat out huge Pulitzer Prize type of, of, of information. I took it to my, to my friend Warren. Uh, we went to the press with this information and were immediately labeled terrorists ourselves, anti-Americans. We were worse than the Dixie Chicks back then. <laughs> How dare you say this is not, that, our, that we're complicit. And, and it was very, oh man, the, the, the threats, the, the physical violence threat. We, I says, look, we need to debate this. Really, can you um, see the energy, the, 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 the quotients here? Is there any other experts we can come out with? And of course then popular mechanics came up with their piece showing how it's you know, all pancaking from melting to, and that swayed so much public opinion. That was a complete and thorough thir fraud. Absolutely. Uh, a scam. And then you've got uh, uh, the average American echoing George W. Uh, don't let, it, let us never entertain wild conspiracy theories. And I would respond to that by saying, well, hello, the government story itself is a conspiracy theory that uh, somebody in a cave in Bora Bora conspired to come out and, and bring down the Twin Towers. Either way, it's a conspiracy theory. Which one do you want to believe more? The question is, how did, how did a Bin Laden get contact to shut down NORAD and to have them back off and, and did all, all of the things that went on to make that a reality? It beggars the imagination from a logical standpoint that somebody with, with, with just armed with box cutters could have that much capability. That's just logical. So we went on the air, uh, wanted to, to air this gentleman's testimony on uh, KCB Radio Live, and he was scheduled to call in. He called in. We started the show, and uh, so I remember 10 or 15 minutes into it, the plug was pulled, the FCC, whatever, came in, and they just shut us down. And my show was canceled, and I, I, it was just wow. If there's ever a proof that this information is right, that was it. And so I quietly said, well, here's the information that wants to have it. I got to still keep living, and I'm not popular right now. You know, truth is not popular. And my logo on my wall, if you can ever visit my office, is is the George Orwell quote: the, "In an age of universal deceit, telling the truth is what." A revolutionary act and my name is true and I well this is my story it's it makes sense it's logical so the bigger question becomes okay if Cooper was right if this dem finished demolition expert is right if it was nukes where did they come from where were they manufactured you just don't go out and and buy uh, bunker buster mini nuke on the open black market. It's one of the things that's not done. Well, Ted had talked about the daisy uh, bomb. bomb uh, um, and I felt there was some truth in that. Um, I don't know how you describe a daisy bomb, but... Uh, I discussed this with, with Ted yes. uh, in depth, and he because he, I gave him the information because I because I trusted him, I did uh, to go through his sources. I've never seen Ted turn pale; he turned pale with that information. His blood, his face. He says, "This makes so much sense; it scares me. I'll have to put it, you know, and get back to you." But it looks plausible. 
And this was, as I remember, this was back in like 2005 when I gave him this information file. Because it was a lot more than just the schematics. There was the, the, um, uh, the, the, the CD uh, music tape that was found in the possession of one of uh, two of the, the bombers or the, the hijackers, uh, which was definitely a CIA program, absolutely a CIA program, and sh showing a gentleman pushing a demolition button to make it demolish. Uh, these are the type of evidence that I think he could have gotten, you know, gotten mm -hmm. a handle on. So I gave him the whole file, and that's one of the things he did finally tell me there in that meeting in 2009 was, yeah, that's absolutely right, because it, and it ties into this satanic ritual abuse network of missing children because it's the same group of people. And so I, people ask me all the time, why do you, why do you focus on the, it's, it's, like, it's like this. When you pull open a rock and look at the slime underneath it and the slimy little bug, you start seeing the, the problem being, like, turn over the same rock and you see the same slime bug, you gotta start thinking that slime bug needs to be exposed. It's the same groups. Well, I was shot. Uh, as, as you, 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 you never uh, know when somebody's telling a history, um, whether he's telling the truth or not. Uh, but um, I was shot and uh, in the hospital. Um, and. Uh, I was doing a radio radio show the next day, and uh, when I was brought in, uh, they said, "Well, you can't do the show," and I said, well, "Why not? <laughs> I'm not here to end the show." And the fellow saying, "Well," you, uh, I said, "Listen, the doctor uh, Cedars of Sinai is uh, who." was standing over me um, was asked the question by yours truly I said what is the chance of my living through this without, without an operation or so, or so? I said, just give it to me straight. Give it to me honest. And he's leaning over and uh, I said, just give it to me straight and honest. And he still didn't say, he says, just give me the facts. What are the odds? He said a thousand to one. I said a thousand to one, for or against. <laughs> he said against. And it was then I made a decision to uh, go through the operation. And um, the next day I was uh, out of the. Uh, emergency room out of the hospital and I did the show. <laughs> Hard to keep a good man down. I mean. <laughs> well, my good friend uh, Bill Cooper did a series of shows about me and um, which moved my heart and uh, my tears uh, I looked at Bill and who said that um, they were coming to get him and they did one day. And I talked to him uh, right before he was uh, 
killed, and uh, I used to go with a, a black girl named Daphne, and he he loved Daphne. Um, and uh, his daughter was named uh, Pooh. He called her Pooh. There are those who fight for freedom, who speak up, speak out, and uh, who dare to t t tell the truth. And uh, Bill Cooper was one of them. I was at the funeral, and uh, I put uh, this act together as... Uh, They buried Bill, who was um, shot about eight times. In the uh, on the front, and um, through the back, they killed Bill Cooper. They murdered Bill Cooper. They didn't allow him to live. They didn't allow him to tell the truth. And my friend, uh, the former head of the FBI, was convinced that uh, we were going to be under attack in a matter of uh, days, and we were. Um, Truat, um, you've taken a stand and suffered some of the consequences. What do you suggest that we do other than what we have not done? We just stay the course. That's all you can do. I, again, as, as, as a Christian, um, and there's a difference between being a professed Christian and being you know you are a Christian. You know, that's how you know you are a Christian is when these anti-Christian forces attack you, and powerfully so. So, you know, I just, I just uh, say... Bring it on. <laughs> Bring we, it on. <laughs> we're talking about the, the Zion Nazi cabal <coughs> that has, in fact, uh, invaded uh, our politics, uh, who controls the, uh, the CIA. I, I looked at a, a poster uh, made by Barbara Tavares and uh, Lou Tavares who said that, uh, well, I'm going to ask from, out, from the other side of the room. William this, Casey, uh, William in Case. 1981, said, we will know when our disinformation campaign is complete, something to this effect, when everything that the American people believe is false. Now I would like uh, Deborah Tavares to uh, use the uh, information that has been was given to us by uh, the former head of the Central Intelligence Agency. 